Now, if our algae bloom is finally cleared up, it's a rainy day, and because it's such a rainy day, our garden will probably be growing, my grass will be growing, whatever will be growing. But we always try to use a rainy day to do some of the things, some of the little maintenance things on our bike. Right now, we don't have any real oil changes or anything to do, but one of the things I wanted to do is do a, well, I'm going to make a couple more of these. What I found out was I put this one on the back of the FZR. I, I made the rubber mounts that are in the back of the seat a lot more solid. So this is now pretty solid. So we get footage from the back. I changed the, and I haven't tried this yet. This is the one. I mounted it. I mounted a, a rubber biscuit in here to, to stiffen this up. So this would now be the camera mount. I had that bar on there, and it was a little bit of a diving board thing. This one worked out really, really well. I liked the footage, and when I showed it to Karen, she said it looks like you're sitting on the side of the motorcycle. Maybe she's right. I don't know. So one of the choices I have now, because these are hard mounted, and it's really important that you don't make diving boards. I want to try mounting it up here. Even though this is not as solid, it's still pretty solid anyway. And it'll probably pick up a lot more engine noise up here. And that's another another issue. This bike is relatively loud, and so is the R1. So you pick up this growl from the engine. But anyway, we got that. I hope that we can... The, the objective is now that I have two cameras, and by the way, this is pretty funny. Amazon told me that uh, the camera is going to ship in one month from China. They were back ordered. The next day, the camera came. Now, maybe they don't know they shipped it. I don't know. You know, their drone or something flew over Rutherford. Who knows? Uh, who, can, who, can, who can say anything about Amazon anyway? But anyway, so this bike is kind of under control with the mounts. The RD, <coughs> I've tried. <coughs> still getting over cold. I've tried this mount, and I like the way this, this takes a nice picture from up here. Again, most important thing, it's solid and not prone to vibration. And not out on the end of a stick like a diving board. The one on the tail section, that's that's nice. But again, a little bit of a problem with this bike. When it's facing backwards, this the, the seat, when you hit a bump, you get that. I still have to make the R1. And this is going to be a challenge because there's no place to really, no hard points to mount it to. I'm, I've been thinking about a way to do it today, one of my projects today. Again, I'm looking at all of these. This one, I moved them out. I had it down here. I was, I was too close to the ground. I haven't tried it up here yet. That's coming. This one is nice. This takes real nice pictures. So, and I don't have a real forward one here. That, that'll be one of the things to work on today. Come up with something I can shoot forward through the windshield. The Suzuki I've got, now that I have two cameras, I want to have that I can always shoot the front and the back. So if I'm in the middle of a group, I'm shooting forward and back. If I pass somebody or they pass me, it doesn't matter. We have that in the uh, on a group rides that we do, especially the two-stroke rides. And that I just leave there all the time. That's worked out real well. And the last thing, and I spoke to Rob about this, if he's kind of interested in getting some camera mounts on this, so but I'll leave that as the lowest priority because I really want to get the idea is that I can get each bike here that I can shoot backward, forward, and side. And I'll always have the two mounts on a helmet. It'll give me five possible places to mount the camera. Now, the reason for that is, and it, you would think it's, well, you'd think it'd be simpler than it is. It's not that simple. When you're watching video for more than 30 seconds and the camera doesn't move, it kind of gets boring. So if you can edit it in, a little from the front view, a little from the side view, a little from the top view, a little from every possible view. Well, that's going to be my uh, my little project today. And I'm actually, I think I'm going to get go down to Lowe's, get some more of this aluminum. and Or maybe I have some scraps here. And just make up uh, some extra brackets. And even some of the brackets will be universal. I can mount them back and forth. But one of the things I really want to do is next time we have a two-stroke day, I want to get more footage of the two-strokes. When Mark Morgan gets back from France, I want to get some, definitely we're going to do some two-stroke uh, videos here in the near future. I thought I'd show this too. This is some of the extra stuff you get, and I've got two cameras and two of these accessory kits. 
The one thing I didn't find that, that I didn't like at all, I, I tried this two or three different times, took some footage, it fell off twice, luckily I had these shoelaces holding it on, uh, and Glenn caught the strap rubbing on the, the back the fairing one time, I, so I, I kind of have abandoned that as one of my choices, now maybe this would be good for some people, and it seems like it sticks real good, but again, these things, I have them on my shower door, the, and in the middle of the night, boom, I, so I don't know. I'm, I'm not, not real confident in that. But one of the things I learned, I'm going to have to swap it out right away. See, these parts come, this is a good thing to know. These parts come, they have three teeth. The one I have on here now only has two teeth. So it's for another application. So the first thing I'm going to do is swap this out so I have a, one with three teeth up here. Now, here's another, a little trick that I learned in putting this on. I need to get this tight, and now I'm going to mark where, where straight forward is so I can get this alignment. So this is going to allow me a little bit of alignment, but not a lot. But replacing this, these ones with two teeth, you have to put a nut on the other side. I don't like that. It's easy. And now that, <clears throat> now that I have plenty of this hardware, and probably before the day is over, I'm going to use a lot of this, I kept all the strapping, all the parts that I traditionally I'm not going to use these uh, selfie sticks I'm not going to use the extra shoelaces the flotation devices because I don't know maybe I'm going to become a skin diver later in life but these are the things that I really want to use I want to try to set these up again the goal is I have made some some short ones and long ones but the goal is and by the way if you buy the camera buy the 32 uh, it, it just doubles the amount of footage you can take for six bucks or whatever it is. They give you this one that's only, uh, it's an hour or whatever. And this one is a lot longer. Just makes it more fun for a few bucks. Again, some of this stuff, it's going to make for an interesting day. It's a rainy day. It's an interesting day. I'm going to try to do some of this stuff and share what I've learned. Now, basically, when you buy the camera and when it was on special it was 40 bucks it's up to 50 now or 55 it was 15 dollars more for the total package when i bought the second camera you get all these accessories now you can play mix and match mr potato head combine two make them longer shorter but that magic rule always applies to keep the mount on a motorcycle as short as possible to avoid resonant vibration that's the whole objective and the objective is, if you can always make the mount out of a one that already has the nut built right in, it just makes it more convenient than if you have the type, and I don't have one here, it's mounted on a bike somewhere. I made the mistake of mounting it and think I'll just carry the nut in my pocket, and it's a, another pain in the neck, then you have to carry a wrench. Where if you have this guy, what happens, you can just run one of these through, and when you're not using that mount, when you're done with this, if you don't use a helmet mount, you just put it in your pocket. You don't need a saddlebag or a, 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 you know, a touring bike or something to carry it up. All of this stuff, there's uses for everything. But what I'm trying to do is make my own mounts out of a lot solider material. Again, because I made one out of carbon fiber. This is the one that I thought was going to work on the R1, but it just got in my way. It wasn't really appropriate. And I made a couple other ones. I just roughed them out. But the idea, too, is if you can use thicker material, this is eighth inch, if you can use um, a little bit thicker aluminum, and steel will always be a little bit better than aluminum if you, if you want to paint it flat black or whatever. But anyway, the, the point that I'm trying to make is everybody that buys one of these cameras thinks they're just going to glue it to the top of their head, <clears throat> and it's going to be Steven Spielberg time. And then when you go home and look at the footage, you're very disappointed. Your head moves... Head mounted stuff, these head mounted things, if you're not real critical, so you move your head to the side. And what I did with one of them, I actually did it with this bike. I turned the, the camera around facing my head. Well, what happens when you lean off the bike, it looks like you're on a trampoline to a certain point. It, it doesn't look like what you think it's going to look like because what would have to happen? You'd have to mount the camera like they do in a MotoGP bike way up on the here. So you can get a panorama. This is it's right in your face, so it's kind of a kind of an issue. But anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is swap this part out. I know that that's one of the things I want to do today. Then I already looked the footage of this, and I see 
I want to have more adjustability in this bracket. It, it's facing too much at the fairing, so I'll maybe take this off, put it in a vise, and just tweak it. But then what I do is I look at it in the camera, and I just want to see the edge of the fairing in there if I can. But again, you learn all these little things, and if I can pass some of them on, it may save you some time, and if not, hey, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, grind I'm trying to grind out the yardage here so that by the summertime, we can have some nice footage. And it's entertaining, and the best thing of all with a camera, it's all free. And free to share with your friends. Now, another little tip that I've learned, that I've learned the hard way, there's two types of knobs. These, I'll call them shorty knobs, that, that have points on them. They're very hard to get, and they're, they're made to go into confined places. But if you try to put that extra little bit of tightening on, you could almost break the fingertips. These that have the bigger flared end, you can get all four fingers in there nice. These are the ones I always prefer to use. They're a little bit bigger. They're a little bit more confining to get into tight spaces. See these, if you look at how much finger area you have to grip. Now, I guess these are okay if you're on a bicycle or something like that. But on a motorcycle, I'm always afraid. I want the thing on tight, to be honest. I don't want to have this thing go sailing off in the middle of a, a group ride. Especially if it's on the rear mount and you don't see it fall off. At least if it's in front of you, you see it. See, now the most critical adjustment for this kind of a thing, and I'm, I'm sitting on the bike indoors because it's raining out there. But I can adjust this now, just get a rough adjustment. I want to see a little bit of the windshield, but I don't want to see everything. I want to kind of face it forward. It's going to be a problem, so what I'm going to try to do, and I'm going to see if it's going to work, if I can raise this up a little bit. See, I have a lot of choices here. I could raise this up. It looks like I'm seeing too much of the windshield in there. I can make that adjustment today. Or I can just go back to this. Now, the advantage of this is the shorter the part where this pivots, the shorter it is, the less vibration there is. As I raise this up, it's going to tend to be a diving board. So, again, I have to do two tests and then decide which is the best for the, the job that I want to do. But that's one of them. And, and you would think, all well, this stuff is very simple. You could just glue the camera somewhere. Well, you know, yeah, depending on what kind of footage you're looking for. And by the way, these cameras are tricky. You uh, see, another time I push that, the screen's going to come back on, hopefully. Hopefully. Nah, it's off. Joe had a lot of trouble figuring out how to get the camera to work, but at the second camera, of course, is a lot easier to figure it all out. But anyway, I when you're facing backward, facing this way, it's a question of I just want to see a little bit of the windshield. That's that's step one. Now I found for my own personal taste, when I've mounted the camera up here or on a windshield, and and I just shoot forward where I can't see any part of the motorcycle in the screen, I don't like the it's personal. I don't like that footage as much as when I can see either a, an instrument, a piece of a windshield, a mirror, something, it gives me a reference as I'm leaning and it's just a reference point and it's just a personal feeling on my part. Now what's nice too is if you watch this camera, if I hit the button a little red light's going to go on. What I found, because this is a significant thing too, you're, you're riding along, the, the screen always stays on for about 10 seconds and then it goes blank to save the battery. That's a good feature. But the problem is, you're riding along two minutes into this, you're recording a 10 minute ride, and you don't know if the camera's on. So you gotta look up and see that little red light. Boy, it would have been nice if they put the light on this side of the camera, but a little inconvenient. But when it's mounted to your helmet, it's just at the spot that you can't look in the mirror and see the red, if the red light is on. So you have to take the helmet off, look and see if the red light is on. Oh, and several times I've thought, I've reached up, and shut the camera off, which just happened while I was shooting a video before this. So I'd say, ah, oh, I pushed the button, and I'm shutting the camera off. And instead of shutting it off, I'm turning it on. So I missed the scene I was trying to follow Glenn through the twisties, and then I think I shut it off, but I really turned it on. I record the whole ride home from Bear Mountain that I don't have any interest in. So you, it's, it's a little tricky until you get used to it, it can be a little bit of an, an annoying thing, but sooner or later you figure that out. And, and to be honest, when you have a $40 camera, I'm willing to live with a little bit of inconvenience. 
But these are just some of the tips I think I think everybody can use these tips. And the things that have taken me months to learn here, I've been, I've been grinding away at this for quite a while. Also another thing, just keep in mind, I've been shooting videos since 1987. I got the first camera, and I didn't even own it, I borrowed it from Ken Budensink in 1987, which became the, uh, the thousand videos that are out on YouTube now of model airplanes. And now we're coming up on, I think, 450 motorcycle videos, so, and, I'm sure somebody has either enjoyed them, learned from them, been entertained, or had a good laugh, or all of the above. Now, and we're trying to go from model planes to motorcycles to now some things that'll help you, or help you uh, at least understand how to edit down a nice video. And I, in the future, I will make a video, I hope I can do it well, of, of what I learned about editing the video. It, it was a little challenging, but I think anybody can do it, to be honest. And that really makes your enjoyment. And then you can post stuff to YouTube. And I was happy to see Glenn posted up the new bike that's already done. We haven't even posted up some of the, uh, the, the parts of painting it because I haven't had a chance to edit them with all the babysitting we're doing. But anyway, it's all fun. It's all free. It's a good combination. This is why whenever I restore a motorcycle, I never throw the old bolts away. I usually replace a lot of the bolts. I have these spacers that I made up for some other job that I have extra ones. This will be exactly, I'm going to go drill this out, polish it, it'll fit on there, it'll raise the camera just the amount I want. The problem is I don't have a lot of American bolts, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to uh, stock up on some, the, the, these I think are quarter 20, some American sized bolts for this project. But if, by abrasing this up, I have the angle that I want to be forward when I do the actual mounting, and that's a good, one of the good ways to do it anyway, since most bikes have a master cylinder like this. It's like a pre-made mount, it's usually pretty solid. And never throw the bolts away. Good tip. So step one is to just drill that out to the appropriate size. So you really like this. I've got uh, 10,000 metric bolts from restoring metric motorcycles. I have no quarter 20. So what I did, I went down to AutoZone, bought a bag of 440 bolts that matched the camera. I, this is really all 440 bolts in here. I'm not kidding. We will never go hungry again. Actually, I'll be able to make up a lot of camera mounts. So back from AutoZone with a, a bag of quarter 20 bolts. And I needed, see what I needed to have is I want to have three different spacers. I got a big one. As long as I was making these up. Every time I taken a lathe out is such a pain in the neck. By the time I made it, I may as well make three of them. And I made the longest one possible, a medium one and a short one, in case I want to change that or I want to use it on one of the other motorcycles. So that looks like now that gives me a little more height over the windshield. I think that's gonna be fine and it's really nice and solid. You can move the whole bike by it, and that's the key is to make them solid. So now this gives me exactly what I want. I, had, I can get just enough of the windshield in there. Also a nice thing too is I can monitor. See, I'm, I'm pointing this right ahead a little bit down before I lock it in. I also can swivel this just by turning this a little bit. So this looks like it's a giant upgrade over the one we had. And when I had that arm out here, and it... I thought it would be important to get it in the middle of the motorcycle. It really isn't, because as long as you can see that little piece of the windshield, if you can see that little piece of the windshield, and in this case you can see it right down here, that gives you a kind of a nice view. Plus, not a nice thing with this mount, I can see if it's running up by the, by the red numbers, I can see if it's running while I'm riding, or if it Battery goes dead, I know right away. If it's on your helmet, the battery goes dead, you don't know. So, a lot of choices here. That, that worked out perfect, and I have three spacers. I can raise it or lower it a little bit as I want to. So, that was, that was one part of a very productive day. No file. <laughs> no kidding! Anyway, we really, we really are working on this, and I'm really trying to make this... So at some point in time, we can really have some fun. It, these cameras have been more fun than I could have ever imagined. And even if you don't get the $40 discount package, you can, and you get them at 50 or whatever they are, it's worth it. 
And again, they're from Amazon. Now, another little tip. Another little tip. Now, a friend of mine, Rich Peabody in Florida, has this, and, and he's uh, very aware of how things work. Used to be a motorcycle dealer. Good friend for many years. What, what has happened is he asked me about this accessory kit. I think he was dealing with a GoPro or maybe one of the fake GoPros. And yes, you can break these parts if you over tighten them. So there's a very, see, here's one I've broken already. So what I'm saying is you don't want to, and when Aaron had these on his, on his uh, Suzuki, I, I'm not sure how they worked out, but they are breakable. So you really, you don't want to ever tighten these with a wrench. And I say always, these are the ones with the wide end. That, when that's tight by hand, it's probably tight enough. Before you break this all up and then you got to order another, these accessory kits are about 15 bucks. Oh, also, I used to have the mount on that hard point. Now I've got it on a forward hard point, just for a test. Again, that's the neat thing is you've got to test, well, to me the neat thing. You, you've got to test, adjust, fool with it, and whatever your standards are. You know, you don't have to meet uh, anybody else's standards. And if, if you just like shooting off your helmet, again, it, for me, it's a personal challenge. I want to try to make this as good as possible and, uh, and as entertaining as possible. And I've been practicing my editing with uh, some chagrin, of course. But I think we're going to be set up for the next day we do get to ride here if, if we do ride this bike. But I want to spend the rest of the time, I have some extra mounts now, and see what I can do about getting some on the other bikes. Another little tip is I like to keep a clean microfiber with me. This little lens, when you're shooting forward, what happens is a bug almost always gets right in the middle of it and ruins your footage. So a lot of times, see, and here's another trick. These are small things you learn as you go along. You don't want to set the camera and go for a one hour ride. You want to set the camera maybe 10 minutes into it, shut it off, turn it on again or clean that lens, because if at minute one a bug flies into that lens, your whole hour of footage is shot. Or if you stop after 20 minutes, get off the bike with the microfiber and clean it, look at it. I can usually tell by how many bugs are on my face shield if I'm in jeopardy of having a bug there. And it, it has ruined whole days of footage for me. Now, if the camera is shooting backwards when it's on the back of the seat, when it's shooting backwards here, you don't have that issue. It almost never gets a bug on it. So, just another thing you can keep in your uh, little data bank. Now, with the new side mount, we're able to just catch the edge of the fairing and the front wheel. So, probably you'll see the wheel turning in, in uh, severe turns. But by mounting this this way, let me just move this. By being able to catch this, you always want to catch a little piece of the motorcycle in the footage. And, it, and again, what I like to see is you see the trees reflecting in the shiny paint. Kind of looks nice, kind of artistic. And of course, the art of doing this is uh, probably the whole reason for doing it, actually. And just that you can share some of this with your friends. It's just so neat to be able to share it. I just think it is. Years ago when we had VHS tapes, it, it was really awkward sharing things. Now, with all this new technology, so easy to share. And thanks to YouTube, we get it all out there. What I did, I fabricated some R1 brackets for a rear mounted camera. I want to have it a little bit different, I just don't want to have it mounted to the back of the seat. And of course, I'll try to get a nice polish on everything. Yeah, I just thought I'd mention one of the things, I got this 30, it was $37, the front end stand that uh, right now I want to clean the wheels, put the bike up on the stands. And you know, I had a little bit of anxiety about for $30, how good it was gonna be. It actually worked out pretty well. And of course, for doing maintenance on a bike and for cleaning it, nothing better than just being able to put it up on the stands, especially for cleaning the wheels. Now I want to make that rear mount. I, I already got the part made. I got to figure out how I want to attach it. And I was just thinking, I want to get it, if I can, so I can just see the tip of the muffler or the blinkers or something, some reference point, but that'll be nice on a group ride. I think that'll really be nice. And the idea is once I find something that I like or that it works, 
I can make similar things for the other bikes, but a lot of experiments. I also had another idea for maybe for another day because we're running out of time. I've noticed on the MotoGP rides, they always have a camera down where you can see the back tire, the back wheel, or the, and there's a bolt, there's a place just where the kicks, the, uh, the chain guard would be on a stock bike. I don't have chain guards on any of the bikes, needless to say, for safety reasons, so. Anyway, now, I've made a lot of parts for this R1, including the exhaust pipes, of course. That's all been on video. But here's one of the things that really worked out to my advantage here. The mounting bolt for the R1, it just couldn't be in a better spot. And boy, the view, the view backward from there is just perfect. So I'm really looking forward to seeing some of that. It's going to catch the end of the muffler now. When I made this piece, this piece is not a part that comes from any aftermarket parts. And a lot of people say, oh, oh, you bought that online. Then you flip it over and you show them. It's really made out of wood. <laughs> it's actually made out of some pretty high tech wood. That's, that's uh, end grain balsa wood that they make ocean racers out of that I just happen to have a piece. But that's it, that's Ferrari quality stuff. That is really super, super light and nobody knows it's wood. That's really funny. I think it's funny anyway. And that snaps right on, of course. You gotta get the key out to do that. That snaps in place. And that's one of the great secrets of the R1. It has a wooden seat. And that mount, that's just perfect. I just can't believe how that worked out better than I ever thought. And what I did, I took the piece that goes around. It's, it's actually a piece. I cut this apart, took the straps off it. Here's the reason, I wanted to be able to do this when I have it mounted, turn it in and turn it out. And if I put the double, the one with two bolts, I can't, I don't have that adjustment. So this will give me the adjustment turning it in. And of course, the rotational part of this, it'll give me a lot of, a lot of, a lot more choices than if I did it. What I'm, here's what I'm trying to say. And you realize this right away when you start doing this stuff, you get out your parts with this. The only choice you have is the camera can go up and down. It can't rotate that way once you peg that in. But this one, because I can put a, a thumb screw under here and I can turn this, I have a lot more, a lot more choices. And what I did, I just cut it out with a saw and polished the edges. And they already give it to you. See, they give you all this stuff. In fact, there's another one in here somewhere. I almost forgot it. Here's another one. There's another one in there. All these things with straps and everything. And I'm still trying to figure out something I can do with these selfie sticks if I can take them apart. Because this makes a nice mount too. See, it's it's got a lot of pot. Well, everything. That's why we're doing this little series of videos. And it's ongoing. It's never going to end. And they give you more straps. Actually, I have more in here. What am I talking about? It's just crazy. It's just crazy how much they give you for 15 bucks. Well, that worked out just as good as you can imagine. And see, it gives me a lot of choices now. I can move this up and down. Get, if I'm riding with a group, I can have the group ride right in, right in the focus that I want. Now, I know, I know one issue is going to be when you go to get on the bike, you got to remember the camera's back there. Or you'll wind up kicking the camera and knocking it over or something. And what I did, I cut the end off a selfie stick. I'm going to go cut this material off, figure out some way of gluing this into a base, because this has a nice mechanism. I just, I'm just not sure how I'm going to use it, but that'll be one of our future little projects. So I hope by sharing the tips that we uh, put on this video, and all the tips, I think some of these will be uh, useful. Well, and if they're not, you know, I guarantee you'll get a hundred percent refund. 100%. This is the one I'm looking to try. Possibly next time we get to ride the R1. I'm thinking that's going to be, that's going to work out great. And the RD1, we haven't had time to work with that a lot yet, but it's all coming. Summer's coming. And hey, thanks a lot for watching. Share the videos and share all the information. And I hope you, I hope you enjoy your camera as much as I do.